we shift now, a shift across to, uh, to literally fostering the digital economy through international cooperation. The gentleman who's going to stand on stage and share with you more about that. Literally, put your hands together for the Deputy Director General for Digital Agenda for Germany and Europe at BMWI, Mr. or Dr. Andreas Gedele. Thank you very much. Dear Mr. Mori, dear Mr. Yamamoto, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the kind invitation to this interesting debate. As Mr. Mori has already pointed out rightly, the need to advocate international cooperation regarding the digital economy is maybe greater than ever. And you mentioned also, Mr. Yamamoto mentioned an optimal um, framework for the free flow of data. And I think data is becoming more and more an important factor for growth. So we need to integrate, as you pointed out, the real and the cyber world. Just to give you a number which underlines the fact and the trend we, 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 have, we face now, experts estimate that between 2005 and 2015, the volume of global data flows increased by the factor 45 at accelerating speed. This is not surprising when you look at how ICT products and digital services have become part of everyday life for so many people. Smartphones, messenger services, navigation, and so on. But it's what is maybe even more important, these data flows are not only caused by digital services, such as telecommunication, data flows are becoming more and more an integral part of every kind of economic transactions. A few years ago, smart products and machines were still visions. Today, the Internet of Things, or Industry 4.0, as we call it in Germany, has become a reality. Connected cars are about to become a mass product. Smart home entertainment equipment such as smart TVs or connected gaming platforms are very common already. These examples show quite clearly data flows become an integral part of the digital economy in many, many cases. Thus, as countries with a strong interest in the digital economy, we need to work together to keep the global business environment open. We need to prevent new forms of digital protectionism. You mentioned the, lo the localization barriers. We are grateful that Japan has put these topics on the international agenda during the Japanese G7 presidency last year. We were glad that Japan has held this GC ICT ministers meeting in Takamatsu. You mentioned it already in 2016. It was really a historical meeting and that the Japanese presidency has shown such a strong leadership in negotiating successfully the G7 Charter for the Digitally Connected World and the Minister's Joint Declaration. As you know, Germany is currently holding the G20 presidency and organizing a G20 Digital Minister's meeting for the first time in the G20's history in April here in Dusseldorf. We try to transfer some of the very good results of the G7 ICT ministers meeting under Japanese presidency to the G20 level, which is of course not always easy given the much more heterogeneous composition of the G20. But we are very optimistic to reach good results at the G20 level as well. In our view, digitalization brings a tremendous potential for growth and innovation to the benefit for all. That was also shown by an OCT um, report we launched in the end of last year, which was launched in the end of last year. To make that growth inclusive and to avoid digital divides needs to be a focus of digital policy on the national level as well as on the international level. Again, we think that Japan has shown a strong leadership in this regard and has done good wo work last year. Let me also take the occasion to thank you for the very good and constructive cooperation between our two countries and our two ministries, especially in the area of Industry 4.0 and the Ro Robot Revolution Initiative in Japan. 
I think that Japan and Germany, as leading economies in the industrial internet, in the internet of things, are working together very well. Japan and Germany are both highly industrialized economies and both follow similar approaches and both, <coughs> uh, with regard to the digitization of the industry, focusing more on efficiency um, and innovation rather than platform business models only. Also, in both countries, the acceptance for the Internet of Things is overall quite high. So we can learn a lot from each other and only win from our close cooperation. And yesterday it was introduced this new notion of Society 5.0, which is also, I think, a very interesting point which, you, which we should discuss in, in the future. It is a very good sign that we substantially deepen our cooperation initiative from 2016 this year with the Hannover Declaration of our ministers uh, last evening in, um, and was also included the Ministry of for Eternal Affairs and Communication and it was related to Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. Then we have the, the joint statement of, internet, uh, of intent uh, in research um, uh, development and innovation between METI, NADO and um, the BMWI. And third, we have this memorandum of cooperation between the two ministries in the area of electric mobility, automated and connected cars. With regard to the following panel discussion, which I'm very much looking forward to, let me just add some final words concerning the issue of digital trade. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that promoting digital trade is at the core of the EU's and Germany's trade agenda. Germany, in the context of the decision to hold a G20 digital ministers meeting for the first time, has also put the issue of digital trade forward to discussions among the G20 this year. Likewise, the EU uh, keeps pushing the discussion related to digital trade at WTO level. But it is important to keep in mind that we should take the current state of work in these four not as a final result. We should rather regard it as a starting point for further and intensi intensified action as the technological, the technological change is fast. Indeed, we should maintain a focus on how to tackle new forms of digital protectionism which create significant obstacles for our companies in different parts of the world. So once again, we agree very much that an open global business environment is essential to the digital economy and that international cooperation is really strongly needed. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for your attention, Aligato, and again for the invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Andreas Gerdela, thank you so much.